guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Taylor and I work on a dairy farm in Maine. Uh, I just do videos about that, so if you enjoy watching those kind of things, don't forget to like and subscribe because we just love to have you guys join us. So we've already done morning milking. You can hear the milk room still running. I do have to go shut that off. The wash just finished circulating, so I'll go shut that off. So Brent is out back. Brent is my boss, by the way, if you are new here. He owns this farm and it's basically just him and I. We milk 70 cows, we pasture our cows, and we just do things a very traditional way. You can see we do still milk in a tie stall barn, which is very unusual this day and age. Um, there's a lot of small, small farms that milk in tie stall barns, but um, milking over 50 cows in a tie stall barn now is kind of unusual. So anyway, he is out back cleaning out the free stall. Um, it's been about two days since we cleaned it out and the girls have been spending a lot of time in there because it was raining um, for the last three days, I think. It's been raining on and off, so. Today, however, you can see is a very beautiful day. We're finally getting some sunshine. I don't think there's a cloud in the sky. So it's supposed to be around 77 today and the humidity is dropped quite a bit. So it's very comfortable. Um, you can see Brett did mow the lawn the other day and that looks really nice. We do have to do some weed whacking along the edges of the barn. Um, we usually don't have time to do that, but we try to do it um, two or three times a year just to make it look slightly better, which doesn't keep it down a whole lot, but you can see it doesn't really grow much over here on the edge. So yeah, the girls are out to pasture. I think they're on the other side right now. So before we get into what we're gonna be doing today, I did wanna show you guys, we had a new baby born two nights ago, I think. So if you guys remember, we had a milking shorthorn heifer. She was a really gorgeous heifer. She had this little girl right here. Um, you can see she's still got some crooked legs cause she's fairly newborn. Also, she wouldn't get up this morning when I went to put sawdust in for her. So I kind of spilt it all over her back. Sorry about that, baby half Hereford, half milking shorthorn. She's a real cutie, but let me tell you, she was crazy. Her mom had her and she ran off. She somehow slipped underneath the gate and somehow ended up over here on the corner of the barn, laying right up against the corner of the barn. So when we finally found her, I kind of walked up to her. I thought she was gonna be a little crazy because they usually are. And I knelt down in front of her and she was fine. She looked at me, I touched her head and then she just went psychotic. She started making that blatting noise they make when they're scared. So I kind of had to grab her real quick so she didn't run off and she is a fighter. She kicked me and gave me a couple scratches on my leg, but she's crazy. She has calmed down quite a bit since I'm bottle feeding her now, um, but I'm not sure why she ran off from her mother. She seemed perfectly happy by herself until I came along and screwed things up, huh? And if you guys can see the two cows in here, the farthest one, the white one, has a bad foot, so we've been kind of doctoring up her foot and making sure she stays inside because we don't want her going all the way down to pasture if she has to limp around. So we've just been keeping her in and making sure that her foot is healing good. And this other one right here, she just prefers being inside. She doesn't like to go outside anymore because she's pretty old. So if she goes outside, she'll just lay in the free stall. She won't actually go graze. So we usually just keep her inside and give her hay inside, just let her live out her last days in peace. She's still a really good milker. She's just old and very set in her ways. So I'm gonna turn off the milk room and then we're gonna go over and we're gonna grab the International. So we're gonna be mowing a field today. Um, it's actually another guy's field. We've never done this field before. So Brent drove by it the other day and noticed that it hadn't been mowed at all. So he thought he would just kind of ask around to see if um, it was possible to get it as some green feed for our cows. And the owner said yes. So we are headed over in a couple hours to mow that. It's a ways away. So it is gonna be a little bit of a trip, but we're only gonna mow it and then bale it in the rows that they're in. And then we'll bring all the bales back and all the machinery back. So it won't be too big of a deal, but I do have to go grab the International and pull it up to the shop because Brenton does have to sharpen that. Our knives are getting pretty dull because it's pretty late in the season. Usually second crop, we will change the knives so that they cut second crop better. But we've been having a really hard time finding the knives. Usually we get them at Tractor Supply but the tractor supply that's near us does not have them. And that's pretty much the only one we go by on a regular basis. So we've just been kind of waiting until we get near another tractor supply that we know carries them um, before we pick up a set of those. So let's go get the International and drive that over to the shop. Okay, so I just went to try to start the International and it will not start, which isn't really that strange. We haven't used it in about a week and a half because it's been raining for a while. And the batteries are, are pretty bad unless you use it daily. So we're gonna have to jump that. It's right on the other side of the shop here. You can see it out this window. So I'll probably just open one of these windows and run a cord out through there and grab the jumper. Also, we got most of this metal cleaned up here. Um, somebody came and took it, not all of it. So we will have to throw some stuff away. But let me see. Okay, so. We've got this. 
just have to find a cord that will reach all the way out there. Are all farm shops this messy? Because it doesn't matter how many times we clean this one, it always just ends up looking like a hurricane came through it. So here's my cords. Here, this one looks like it's really long. Okay, this one should do. Just tie it around this so while I'm trying to take it out there, it doesn't come undone. And of course the door's locked, so. You don't need to sharpen them after all? I, I guess not. It, it'll be alright, I think. Okie dokie. You, you, you gotta mow with the GA back anyway. The head is way too fast. Especially if it hasn't been cut, even first cut. Yeah. I think it's charging, but it doesn't make a noise, huh? Oh yeah. As long as that needle goes down, it's faster. This, this one is toast. Yeah, those nine are okay. This one works good. Good job. What's that? Talking. Why? They'll be alright. They're fine? Yeah. You gotta go all with the right. PA. Okay, I will. Just give that a minute. Let's start. We'll push the fuel in. We can head over. We're gonna stop and check out that fuel limb finish. Think it's dry enough? If you stayed away from that, that little part corner, toward the road? Yeah, I'm gonna walk it. I'm gonna walk it. And if it's good, stop and do that too. This field is not. It's growing back a little, but. Not as fast as I thought it would. No. Of course, it hasn't been sunny. Just, might know that the sun's just raining. Well, so. the patch looks good. Look at it. I know. There must be some green grass out there because they were awful loose this morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, charge faster. How far down is it? Straight across? It's just a little bit below straight across. Oh, really? It should start in a minute then. Okay. Uh, I guess now we wait. Oh, I crawled up the wrong way. Come on.
field right now. Brent met us over here just to show me where to go in. It's pretty weedy, but probably if we mow it the next couple years, it will definitely get back to, to what it should be. Uh, it's pretty decent size, it looks like, so let's get started. I think Brent's gonna show me where there's a spot that I have to mow around, so let's get going.
it actually goes all the way back down there and comes all the way back up here and it's fairly wide. This is a great field. There weren't many rocks in it and it's surprisingly heavy. I did find one rock with a mowing machine. It didn't ruin any of the knives. It just bent one up so I had to beat that back down and now it's fine. It's a little weedy but definitely great feed for the girls to just eat green. I think we're going to get about 25 to 30 bales out of this so we're probably not going to be baling the whole thing this afternoon but I do know I am supposed to be baling some of it. So I'm going to head back. It's about 12.30 and it's lunchtime. We're going to grab a quick lunch and I'm probably going to jump right into baling. I'm not exactly sure yet. You can see a nice field of alfalfa over here and also there's a lake back there. It's just, just a beautiful spot right here. It's just gorgeous. And it's a nice day so nothing I'd rather be doing on a nice sunny day than mowing on the international. So there were a few things that I wanted to show you guys when we got back here. So the first thing you guys are going to notice is pretty obvious. We did move that whole entire bush that was out in front of these windows. Um, it's really hard to keep this stuff from growing back. I'm not really sure what it is. It's some sort of bamboo, so it grows like wildfire. You'd pretty much have to pick it every week to get this stuff to stay away from here. And I guess the only way you can really kill it is I guess you can't snip the tops of them and then pour Roundup right down in them. And that's the only thing that kills them, I guess, is if you do that all the time. So there's really absolutely no way to get rid of them. So we're just going to have to pick them more, keep a better eye on them. We put the smulch down because we thought they would at least be easier to pull up, which they are. So it didn't take us long to do that. So the other thing you guys will notice is the windows are gone. So we did tear the windows out today. I'll go around and show you guys. I can just go through here. Why would I go around? Okay, so this is what it looks like. This board right here, believe it or not, is not actually that bad. But we are still going to replace it just because we're in here anyway. The plan is we're going to cut from there, where the window stops, over and down, right up against here. Because you can see there is a little bit of water damage right here as well. So we're just going to cut that whole thing out. Put a couple new braces in, put a new baseboard in. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, cut straight over and down and just basically put a whole new wall in here because this section is actually up against cement because it goes up there into Brent's house and everything. So yeah, we do have to take this vinyl siding off. So we'll get that off there. That's going to be pretty much the worst part because it does go all the way over and up that way. So we're going to have to take off a lot of the vinyl siding that's not actually just right here, which is kind of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. So. Brent just covered the drain cover with his t-shirt to keep stuff from going down it while we were tearing that all apart. So now he's lost that t-shirt, I hope. I really hope he's not going to put that back on. So the windows are right here. This one right here is pretty rotten. So this might be the one that we put in the front of the barn because it actually does not need to be replaced. The wood on it is just fine. This one, however, does need a new frame. So something Brent did when I was gone mowing, he stained this part around the window and he did get it on this a little bit but we're just gonna wipe that off with some paint thinner or something um, but he stained that so that looks really nice it looks so different but it looks great that's pretty much what we've been up to just a few random things working on stuff trying to make stuff better trying to use the good weather that we have while we have it uh, tomorrow's not supposed to rain but the next day is supposed to rain and then we're supposed to have a five-day stretch of good weather I really hope that this does happen it's not one of those times that they say it's gonna be nice and it actually isn't I hope that doesn't happen this time because we really actually could get some dry second crop if it stayed like they say it's going to. Right now they say it's going to be four days in the high 70s to low 80s 
and a couple days that are in the low 70s but if it was in the high 80s we could definitely make dry hay which would be really unusual this late in the year since it's almost September but fingers crossed that that happens so anyway I hope you guys did enjoy this video if you did please don't forget to like and comment down below and hit that notification bell so you know when any new videos are being posted keep it real keep farming and I hope to see you guys in the next video bye guys